Okay, hello. It is midnight. Somewhere in the world, at least here. So we're doing a... Um, put our kid to bed. So we're doing a midnight teardown of uh, her electronic toys. Because this is something that techie parents always say they're going to do. Um, they're like, oh, I'm going to hack it so the music is lower. Or I'm going to put my own stuff in there. So uh, we're actually going to do it. So uh, the toy that we're going to take apart tonight is from Baby Einstein. And it is called the Take Along Tunes. Um, this was recommended by a couple of people. They're like, oh, you should get this. And, it, you know, it has like one button to play sounds. We'll show what it does. Um, super cute. It does not play The Cure or Joy Division. Um, it just plays some, nice cla play, play some classical music tunes ish. And like, people on YouTube are like, oh, here's the, the, the songs. And here's uh, Next to Small Human Hands. Um, here's a quick video um, just so you can see what it does. Okay, so what I don't quite understand now that I'm a connoisseur uh, or a collector of some of these toys is why isn't there like, like Guitar Hero has, you know, Slash, some of, and they have songs from musicians. Why isn't yeah. there like, you know, baby toys with... Oh, like you think there should be like the Johnny Cash version? I would like a Prince one. Okay. Um, and Ooh, you know, would like Yeah, that. purple and stuff yeah. like that. So um, I think we're just going to have to make them. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. So this is the first step of many. Um, we have a little kicky piano. Um, so we'll do some Tori Amos yeah. that, but, um, the other thing is it's all like lions and tigers and everything I do. That's fun. But I do think there's more modern things that young there, people, young, young children might need to. There's to more stay. yellow cabs than yellow lions. Yeah. That's true. You have to watch in this like hippo. It's like, well, watch out. You know, you're going to get you're more likely to get run over by, um, you know, an SUV. Right. So, um, this is the first of many we think and uh, we've done teardowns before they're always popular um this is the setup we're going with now each week when we do these or each day i don't know what else are we going to do at midnight when the kids asleep um we're going to get more powerful optics and we're just going to see how far we can push it this one's pretty easy lady is going to dive right in we used to do teardowns all the time at Adafruit. We yeah stop for a little bit but we may we'll get back into it yeah and i think that um we'll be able to uncover some neat stuff one of the coolest things about electronic toys is you can tell it is the absolute lowest cost way to go so you can learn a lot about the but, design but and there's one thing i don't mean low cost in a bad way no it's not bad but no look you want to make it affordable so people can yeah. can have it for their kids uh and if they break it it's not the I end think of the it world was like six bucks or something but what's neat is um you know the enclosures are really durable because they're meant to be like yeah. kid proof and so and they always have little battery cases that are like nice screwed closed um so they actually make for excellent hackable yeah. enclosures compared oh. to like like look you you get an ipad or you get like a modern cell phone like you can't yeah change well you're not enclosure. yeah and and uh, there's a lot of space in here we'll see and the show. for the folks that are going to ask so the one of the ideas is we take the electronics out of these things we put in our own reference board that shows up as a Wi-Fi device, you drag and drop your own um, music on it, and then you can do your own light show and you can update it over Wi-Fi. Or wi maybe there's SD card. And it's all, but it's still the same enclosure. It's still, you know, baby safe. Um, and so you just use that enclosure, but we want to reproduce the functionality. So this is just the start of this. So let's uh, dive right in. We've got um, the device. We're going to do a little okay. bit of a kit cooking show thing. So let's do the before. Well, this is, yes, this is the thing. So it's little sounds and then um this actually does this has leds behind it we'll show you and this has you know it's like an ipod-esque but it's really just a button when you press it so it's not actually four but different button no it's not four buttons and there's the it's speaker not song that says either and then this is the battery case That's all it does you just press the button and it goes to a different song one thing that i do say i like is that um the baby einstein stuff uses screws and they're all like really easy to open none of it is glued closed yeah my iphone doesn't have screws yeah so all it does but that's kind of nice okay so this is the outer enclosure <laughs> So by the magic of I undid the four screws earlier today. <laughs> yeah. This is what it comes out to be. Yeah. Um, so there's this plastic piece. I'll leave it on this and then tell me when you want to go to the close. Yeah, when we're getting close. So this is the plastic piece. And so here's another interesting thing. Um, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of screws. You'll see a lot of like little hex spots here um, and almost no glue. And I think that's actually because it makes it, it is much faster to manufacture if you don't have to wait for the glue to cure. 
Um, so I think they actually went with gluing and snap fitting as much as possible. And this is that little um, button piece. But again, it, it's one button. It's not four buttons, even though it looks like it's four. It's it's yeah. eight or five. Uh, and then like the you're too much thought, you don't know the difference. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know the difference between capacitive and resistive touch. Yeah. Well, our, our <laughs> okay. So this is uh, and let me show the and we'll we'll zoom in in a minute. So this is the main PCB. There's this on off switch. Um, one nice detail is they put heat shrink over the um, terminals. Uh, so this is actually pretty well made. I'm gonna zoom in for so that, right? you want. Yeah, you want to zoom. Okay, so yeah. here. Um, because you can see it really good. So yeah, you see how this has heat shrink on it. Yeah. Um, that's not done in really cheap electronics usually. So, um, it's like it's inexpensive, but it's well, well made. Um, and then down here, you can see, this is the speaker. We actually basically stock this speaker. This is like a half watt eight ohm speaker. And you can see it's kind of a, a nice design because it's got the, um, oh, hit the, oh, hit the fix button. I'm going to okay. say focus lock. Yeah. We did that locker. Yeah. Hold on. We're still learning. There you go. Okay. So now it's locked. Okay, so now I can twist this. Um, so you can see, I'll, I'll show later where these go. And then here's that, uh, like I said, a lot of things are screwed and these are the little um, hex nut holding plastic pieces. Um, so this is the button. Like I said, there's only one button. And so it's, a, you know, it's a magnetic, uh, not a magnetic, it's like a little conductive pill under a rubber gasket. And this is not glued. I believe this is just press fit in using a little... This I didn't take apart ahead of time, so let's see. Yeah, this is just a little um, silicone piece, and you see there's a little conductive pill, uh, and this is just uh, traced, on, traced on. It's nice enig coated, which is uh, fancy. That's it. There's not a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, it's a gold coat, so it'll last a yeah. while. Um, so that's really nice. They could have gone with just a plain uh, uh, lead-free hassle cover, but they didn't. They did They did enig, and it, it is Rojas here, as you can see. Um, the speaker connection, another nice little detail. See how they put the uh, solder mask here? Just gives it a little mm -hmm. bit more separation and a little more protection for the, pack, for the traces so they don't lift. Uh, because this is a single-sided board. It's a paper phenolic, which is not unreasonable, right? Yeah. There's no reason for it to be double-sided. Uh, it's just funny because it means like this, these power traces go all the way around. Yeah. Um, but the person who designed this, like they did a really good job. Like everything's labeled very nicely, nice large pieces. Um, this is the red, green, and blue LED. You know, when you press the button, uh, it does that. There's little slots. I'll call out questions I'm sure people yeah. can ask. So why wouldn't you just use, like, one NeoPixel-like thing? It is just cheaper. I mean, yeah. a NeoPixel, even the cheapest of all the NeoPixels is maybe four cents in quantity. Yeah. This is a tenth or, you know, or less of a cent. Yeah. These LEDs are so incredibly can't, cheap. So you can't do as much with, as far as controlling, like, fading or maybe stuff like that but you can still you yeah this can like fade on off but it's like you know you just get one led like yeah, personally if i was going to redo this pcb i'd add like six neopixels <laughs> because like i'm i'm luxury <laughs> neopixel now the thing is you know this is obviously an epoxy blob that's yeah. not unusual um inside of here is is a little i don't know if you would call it a microcontroller you know it, it's some kind of processor um i believe you know i've chatted with people it's probably like a four eight bit audio controller that you know when you press the button it has a little bit of rom memory and it makes those those tunes and they're programmed into a rom chip um you can't just change the you, there's no like access to reprogram the song and why do they put a i mean you know i know the answer is this but this is for for folks who are just getting interested in this. Well, why, yeah. why would you put a blob of epoxy on here um it's cheaper to just take the chip and just mount it directly to the pcb and you bond it onto the pcb and then you put a glob of epoxy it, it saves you basically 10 cents, but yeah. 10 cents times millions. Yeah. Times millions. It's like standard issue kid toys. I think it's like, you know, yeah. six or seven bucks. Or like, and it's, you know, it does, them. it does make it more durable. I mean, right. like, even if you spilled water into this thing, it would survive because you're not going to get water under like the little yeah. pins. And then Probably here's the, the contacts. So this is, um, speaker power. And, oh, right, so the speaker has, um, there's low and high volumes. Let's see if I can show it. Yeah. And then some of the kids' toys, they have... You can um, barely see it. I mean, the only thing that is a little bit annoying is, like, that it's it's molded and not, there's no paint. So it's, like, you can kind of barely yeah. see there's a circle and this small speaker and a big speaker. So I have one of the toys with me now, but, um, and they make these. So some of the features are, like, oh, you have three languages for the ones that talk. Yeah. And it's 
English, Spanish, and French, which is cool. But no Klingon. No Klingon. But also, um, when we make our hacked versions, you'll be able to put whatever language you want because you're putting all the files on. So yeah. basically, it unlocks um the capability of a of a kit toy it's always going to be updatable yeah uh, maybe the, you know maybe you want to learn three different uh, one of the languages besides those maybe there's other languages yeah you want. all right so what else is on this thing portuguese um so and then another thing is that the battery connector so you know these, these all run on double a batteries which is smart because double a batteries can get rechargeables mm. um and they're very they're plentiful they're available everywhere you know they don't have built-in battery charging it's a lot safer you know, whenever we did um, kids' projects or wearables, I always try to, you know, to go with yeah. AA or AAA batteries. Sometimes people are like, oh, you should use LiPos. It's like, well, you are not going to do LiPo charging on clothing. And we have to keep saying it over and over. Yeah. Um, but I think folks are kind of cool about it now. They're like, yeah. oh, because I'm doing costumes. And like, now I understand the the logic and wisdom and safety behind that. Yeah. So this, this is soldered on. And you can see it solders directly to the PCB. Also smart design so you know one of the things that we're gonna have to do is um you know, we might have to have a boost converter just because this chip is designed to run on two volts but some of our electronics is you know especially the neopixels actually i'm kind of surprised the green led actually it might be a um there might be a little micro booster or a switch cap in here mm. that uh gives you a higher enough voltage to to run the blue led because if this is 2.4 volts it won't light yeah. up the blue led so you know what i bet these two capacitors here maybe um our switch caps maybe or so, there's something going on here that gives you that somehow boosts the voltage up just a little bit just to drive the uh the green and um blue leds one of the things that we thought would be neat is have an exact drop-in sized replacement so you can always keep your existing functionality just you know unscrew all this take it out put our board in yeah um our open source board and then you can you know connect to a wi wi-fi drag and drop some files on it um teach the kid how to do programming on it later um what we'll, so we'll see it looks like that might be possible where we'll be able yeah. to measure this and you will have to like you know desolder and resolder yeah. some of these connections but you know that could be like a fun hacking thing and there's people who've like hacked toys before yeah um, midi jack out the side and... yeah absolutely <laughs> you know and that's another thing it's like you know it's it's a great case yeah, you know, right do a circuit bending right like i wouldn't add i can't add more buttons like people are, can you yeah. make this thing well not really because like i'm kind of stuck with the case design the, the other it. thing is you know no, not a dig at all the cute little cute little person but i want to paint this to make it a skull yeah and so you know there's a lot of things i want to do to this um and I, but you can't, it wouldn't make sense to do that now and have the music stay the same. Well, maybe I could, I might be able to add four buttons. I could see, like, maybe if I just put four buttons in. Yeah, we could put, we can give, we can have it like a little slider like that. Yeah, okay, so what else is on? Uh, this this is pretty much it. I mean, like, this is, you know, it's just, like, I just started looking at my base. This is the first time I'm yeah. looking at it. Um, and how do they store the music on these things? This is, it's in, in underneath this epoxy blob is a ROM chip that has the music hard burned in. So there's, again, like I said, there's no way to replace, even if there was a, like a debug port, like you're not, you, yeah, they're it's not gonna burned in permanently, yeah. um, like etched into stone. So you can't, yeah. you have to basically. I saw online them. that someone's posted these files up. They've, I guess, done a really high quality you, recording. You, yeah, you can get the, rec the recording out by just, um, you know, connecting the speaker output into a microphone through a resistor to protect yeah. your microphone so you don't end up oh, that's fun. blowing it out. So you can get the digital signal out yeah. and then record it. And then, is it analog signal and you're and you're recording digitally or is it you, you... Yeah, it would be analog, but it's probably PWM. Yeah. Um so you know you're gonna get fairly good like as long as you filter it, you'll yeah. get. Yeah, because it's not like a microphone; it's actually just the audio going. going. Yeah, not a mic. I mean, you're you're, you're tapping indirectly into yeah. the signal, um, so you'll get you know very very good recording. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're not you you can't change you know you can't change it without basically changing the entire PCB. Right. So what would be or sorry, what is going to be the first step with making our own version? Just popping this PCB off, measuring it. Yeah. So you what you want to do is you know you have to line up the those little screw holes and like you know, there's a screw here. So um, maybe we'll scan it in on a scanner. Yeah. So it's identical. The the ideal thing is if you have a flatbed scanner, you take the PCB, you, you put the you know you have to I have to unsolder it yeah. right, and then you put it into a flatbed scanner and you scan it. Um, and that just gives you like a really nice flat one to one reproduction. And then you know I would actually just take that image raster it to black and white and then like e it literally import it into eagle cat and then just yeah. race it out all right when i do this maybe we'll start a github repo 
and we'll just like here's the scan for yeah. someone else. Do you want to have help. like this little slot? You know, if you get it right, it'll snap in. Um, and like you know, if you want to reuse this button, also like you need. I I think I would like to reuse all of the mechanical stuff because it's yeah. been battle tested. Yeah. By babies. By babies. Uh, but then, yeah, you only need to desolder, and you know these are color coded, so it's not too bad. Oh, you know what's funny? Here's this capacitors. You know, I bet this these um these caps, these big caps. caps. These that's the switch. I bet that's a switch cap converter. Yeah. Yeah, because like, why would you have three capacitors? It seems a lot. It's like a voltage doubler or something. Is yeah, if there? you want to show it on the other cam tilt it up that way yeah, yeah so that's very weird to have especially since they're 10 volts there's no reason to have a 10 volt capacitor on these you should have like a three or, or six volt so it makes me think that there's a voltage doubler in here that takes the that's built in which makes sense right because people are going to put in like dying batteries so you're going to get two volts out of here you need to boost this up to four or I wonder five. How long the batteries last probably a very long time yeah. i mean like yeah you know. that'll be interesting when we do our uh tests uh so the other piece of this that i'm going to ask is um we could use an rp2040 we can use an esp32 uh s2 um d3 like what what chip what chip do you think we might we might use for our board yeah that's a good question i mean um you know if there's no usb port we could cut a port but i kind of like the idea of having it be um I don't want to wi-fi yeah. you know it's like you basically you have you know 10 seconds to when you put for turn it on or you know you can use uh, press and hold the button or something yeah like if the button is like yeah the button is held while you're if, turning it on press and hold the button then it's in it goes into bootloader mode or something send me files um and the only thing is though you know that uses more power but you know maybe if you only turn on the wi-fi during that the ESP32 yeah. is a fairly low power chip. The RP2040 would also be great. Um, it doesn't have Wi Fi access, but you know, one thing is there's not a lot of space here. Like, we might yeah. be able to have a Pico go like yeah. a Pico W. And so you could take advantage of like, you know, there's these low cost boards. You would solder that in. Um, yeah. But you know, maybe, I, yeah. Maybe I'll have uh, you know, Pedro uh, do a 3d reproduction of this so people could have it as an enclosure for their projects yeah they want to figure out how to fit stuff in okay well that's yeah, it our... looks like it could, you fit like you know much much larger stuff so you know i don't i don't know yet but i'm thinking i'm thinking probably a um esp32 s2 because mm. it's really it's really stable um one thing that's funny is the um s2 does have a dac output but we like there's no dma to the dac so it's not good for playing audio clips so we might have to add um like an i2s amplifier to get really good because i think you want really good quality audio that is one of the things that children's toys are not known for yeah like it would be really cool if this had like nice a nice ice gonna drop my Og vorbis on my Og vorbis files yeah on the other hand we don't have i i think in circuit python i don't think we have mp3 playback for esp um i know there is an arduino there is an arduino though yeah oh, or it can do wave we can do wave yeah so um yeah like i think and i can't get samd's so it can't be samd yeah <laughs> so. i think one day in the future there might be like a, a kid toy development kit where parents um whether they're coding or using drag and drop um or you know no code and they're like this is the songs i want on it and this is the light patterns i want on it and they publish to the device and they get to almost like ringtones for their phones, but they yeah. want specific songs for their kids. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is neat, but um, I'm just not into um, the like elephants and lions and frogs. Like, it's cool, you know, yeah. but it seems like there's there's um, other things that and there's just nothing out there's no there's nothing like everyone just copies each other like all yeah. the all the toys are yeah the all the toys are it's very yeah. interesting to see the the it. evolution of yeah. like one person it, comes up with a kiki piano and then they all kind of yeah i got two different kiki way. pianos and they're basically identical yeah and um it's cool um you know it's consistent but i i feel like kids have to keep up with the changing times and a lot of these things are getting a little dated so. i just think it would be great just to load whatever her favorite songs are you load them on and you can get you yeah. know people make like midi like they make like you know lyricless you know like karaoke basically yeah. basically turn into a little karaoke machine yeah a little bit of bowie a little bit of prince mm. a little bit of cure mm. that's that's our current playlist i'm going to raise her to be totally enabled to 
socially interact with g girls her age. <laughs> yeah. It's like she's she's like, I'm listening, only listening to 80s music. Um, okay, well, let's okay. tear down. So we'll be back with more of these um, and uh, more optic equipment because I think we're going to be able to do this late at night. Yeah, we're, we're, we're I think we did a good job here. Yeah, just good. All right, thanks, everybody. All right, good thank night. Thank you.